the ugly stage of marine fish keeping. That point in your aquarium setup where everything is going wrong. Everything looks disgusting. You have hair algae everywhere. All your corals and macro algae are unhappy. How do you get out of it? Are you going to actually just give up the hobby completely because you can't handle this anymore? Well, I'm going to give you five tips to get through this. I am not completely out of the ugly stage myself, but I'm getting there. We're starting to win. If you've been watching my previous videos, you will know the journey I've been on and you can see the difference in my systems. And I'm going to tell you how I've done it. It's really quite simple. It is essentially good husbandry and doing the basics that you should be doing as a marine fish keeper. So firstly, one of the biggest mistakes I was making on these systems was lack of water changes. Now, I'm not saying I didn't do any water changes, but I did not enough water changes. Now, I've got a big system here on this side. You can see it's quite large. It's around 900 litres of water. And on this side, we have around 800 litres of water. So there's a lot of water. And you might forgive me for not doing a water change every week because it has an expense to it. And that's one of the reasons why some people can skip water changes because it's expensive, especially now. And also, if you don't have your own RO system, you then also have to drive and get your water from somewhere else, like a local fish shop. But it is the most key thing you need to do. Let's just say these systems are six months old almost. And I was water changing them around, uh, let's say a third once a month. And that's roughly one of these barrels, slightly more. And it was not enough. After a couple of months, the ugly stage was kicking in. It was getting worse and worse and worse. My macroalgae, which are now starting to recover, were not growing. They were not happy. You know, everything was going wrong. And the reason was, in a new marine system, you lose nutrients. It's very unstable. As the system matures, lots of things get sucked out of the water. And we're not just talking about calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, all the big ones. But there's micronutrients and things you just don't test for, which, as your rock matures, sucks it all out of the water. You can't test for it. So you might think that all your other levels are great, so your water must be good. But this is wrong. It's absolutely, completely wrong. You will lose nutrients that you can't even test for, that you can't even probably pronounce. And the only way to renew those is through regular large water changes. Now lots of people tell you not to do large water changes but at the moment I'm doing around 50% to a third every two weeks which in some cases might not even be enough. You might want to be doing that every week just to keep the balance. I know it, it does destabilize the system when you take half the water out and replace it with fresh water but what we're aiming to do with this is keep the nutrient level as stable as possible. Now, in my experience, even if you do a 50% water change, as long as it's the right temperature, you don't tend to annoy corals. Now, this coral you might notice has lost a head, and that's because I didn't do enough water changes. But, since I've been doing water changes, even though the head has dropped off, it's been sitting there for the last four weeks still alive. Purely because, I, my, in my opinion, the water quality has been good enough for it to survive. The next thing you're going to need is a good cleanup crew. You can see here I've got a lovely little hermit going about his business. These are essential. If you're going to get through the ugly stage, which looks a bit like this here with hair algae and rubbish about, you're going to need a good mixture. Snails, hermits, and of course yourself, because you are the biggest hermit crab your system has. Now what I've been doing in this tank is scrubbing the rocks gently. Never take them out, never bleach them, never hydrogen peroxide them, all the silly things that people do. We don't want to destroy the bacteria on the rocks. We are just removing some of the hair algae. We are being a herbivore, okay? So that's the ethos. And I tend to be doing this around water change time. So scrub all the rocks and then suck all the rubbish out when you do your water change. And it works a treat, you can see. So I found a good mixture of cleanup crew is pretty essential. You need hermits, you need snails. Not just uh, turbo snails, not just the same old banded trochus, 
but I found a mixture of snails tends to do a good job because they're all evolved to do different things. So a trochus snail or an astrea snail are very good. But what about the sand bed? So you're gonna need Nasaria snails, you might need some Cerith snails as well. They are excellent, although I do find that they tend to die off quite quickly when they run out of food. Also, conches. Conches, conches, conches. I love them. They are amazing for keeping that sand bed clean. Here's one hard at work now. Look at his little trunk. Not only are they amazing at cleaning sand, they look a bit peculiar, but I find them oddly cute with their little long eye stalks. So in my last video, I spoke about how you know your tank is maturing. And a lot of it was to do with the microorganisms in your aquarium. And that is part of how you get through the ugly stage. Now this little sump here is getting through the ugly stage. And the reason I know that is because the microorganisms are starting to appear. In a reef aquarium, I find it's what you can't see that is the most important. And they are normally different types of bacteria and to some extent little microorganisms like amphipods and copepods. But you'll find when the bacteria starts to get to the right level, that is when you're going to be starting to leave the ugly stage and entering a mature reef. Now there are certain things you can add to a reef system when it comes to bacteria supplements. There's loads and loads of different types and they do work to a certain extent. But it's not really something that you can quantify. It's just something that will happen naturally on its own accord. Now unfortunately, or fortunately for the environment, it's becoming harder and harder to acquire live rock. And live rock is one of the main vectors for good bacteria into your reef system. So we are becoming more and more reliant on these bacteria supplements to give our system that boost, that dose of bacteria that it requires to get to that mature stage. However, you still do add these things when you add corals and such like into your reef system. So next is a big one, lighting. This is something that lots of people get very confused about and tend to not really know what they're doing especially a lot of the new fish keepers, which is totally fine. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but lighting can play a key role in getting through the ugly stage. Now, obviously, we need light. If we have corals or we have macroalgae, we need light in our system. And also, why would we want a fish tank with no light on it for six months? Because we're not going to be able to see our fish, and we can add fish during the ugly stage, it's no problem. And I want to see them, despite the hair algae. But what you can do is limit the amount of light. And if you limit the amount of light, it will limit the amount of ugly algae and rubbish which builds up in the aquarium. Now, some people suggest running your system for six months or so without a light on it, and then you won't get that horrible hair algae bloom, which a lot of people do, or diatoms, or cyanobacteria, and so on and so forth. But what you'll then also not do is grow those beneficial microalgae, like such as coralline algae, you won't grow anything beneficial that relies on light as well. So it's a double-edged sword. I don't really recommend that you run your system with no light on, but I do recommend you limit the amount of light. So what I've had to do on these systems is reduce the amount of light to around six hours a day. Now I was initially running them for 10 to 12 hours a day in an effort to try and grow the macroalgae faster than the hair algae. That did not go so well for me, unfortunately. I'm still recovering from it now, but we're getting there. You can see the sand is a lot cleaner than it used to be. And that is in part down to the fact that I've reduced my lighting to around six hours a day. It might be between six and eight, depending on which tank system we're looking at. You'll note as well that I'm using T5s on a lot of my systems. And obviously a lot of people have gone away from that, but I'm just gonna tell you it doesn't make a difference or it hasn't made a difference in my systems depending on whether I'm using the T5s or whether I'm using the LEDs, hair algae has been growing equally and as numerous in all of my systems. So it clearly wasn't down to lighting alone, it was down to water quality and the other things that I have discussed. Filtration is important, flow is important in any reef system. Now filtration and bacteria, which I've already spoken about, kind of go hand in hand but let's talk about the other part of filtration, which is mechanical filtration. You'll see in here, there is a lot of debris that is getting caught on this egg crate. And that's an indication that this system, or in fact, maybe this tank on its own, doesn't quite have enough flow. I've got a little power head in here, but it's not moving the dirt off my algae enough, is it? 
it's settling on the algae and that's because there's not enough flow. So that's something I actually have to sort out, which I will be doing. And that's something that a lot of people don't also uh, encourage in their own systems. We need more flow. So in this tank, we either need a bigger power head or you can see my inlets here, there's three of them, but they're not really flowing that quickly. And that's because the pump in this system isn't strong enough. So my need is to switch the pump out to a more powerful one and get the flow going through the tank. Corals love flow, macroalgae loves flow, and if you're struggling with flow, you need to increase it in your system. And then that goes into hand with your filtration. Although in my systems, I rely on the biofiltration being in the sump or in the tank itself using lots of live rock, the filter is there to capture that rubbish. And once we start capturing the rubbish, it will stop settling on the substrate, it will stop settling on the rock work, and then you'll end up with a better looking sand bed, you'll end up with cleaner rocks, because a lot of the time when the debris is settling on the rock work, that gives the base for the hair alley to grow. And that's why I've been brushing my rocks pretty much every day to try and get rid of that debris and try and encourage the coralline algae to grow instead of the hair algae. So flow and filtration are incredibly important. And even if to begin with, you have to add another filter or another two filters to your tank, which you will then remove later, just to capture all that rubbish, that is something that you should really do, or at least think about heavily. So finally, and this doesn't really count as a tip, I don't think, but it's just be patient, okay? There is a lot of pain in keeping marine systems. Now, I thought as an experienced reef keeper, someone with 10 years experience working in the retail and wholesale side of this hobby, I would have an easy time and blow through this so easily because obviously I know everything. How wrong I have been, and it just shows you that you don't know everything. You can't just walk through setting up a marine system no matter how experienced you are and how much you think you know this can happen to you and you have to rely on the fundamentals which i've gone through in this video and that will see you through but also you have to have innumerable patience time is really the only thing that's going to turn your marine system from a hair algae encrusted beast into a lovely mature and balanced reef system time and patience go hand in hand and let's just put it this way, I've had six months of, I would call almost hell, in getting these systems how I want them, and they're not even there yet. It's probably gonna take another six months before they are really ticking over in the way that I wanted to. That's like a year of my life spent getting these tanks how I want them. And that's what you have to do. Reef keeping isn't easy. It's not a walk in the park. Now, freshwater fish keeping isn't easy either. Believe me, I've done that as well. And freshwater keeping is, just as hard as marine systems, but I find that things in a freshwater tank move a little bit quicker than in a reef system, and that's one of the big jumps. If you're coming from freshwater to marine systems, you have to like triple or quadruple the amount of time it takes to do anything. So patience and time. So there's my little tips to getting through the ugly stage. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can also see the changes in my systems as we uh, develop my fish room here. If you are a long time viewer of my channel then thank you so much, I really appreciate it, especially if you're watching this bit of the video. Now I know some of you do and that is really key for me because what's the point of me making long videos if nobody watches them to the end and if you're watching them to the end you are the real MVPs of my channel. Once again thank you for watching, if you have liked it please leave a like below and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already have a lovely rest of your day or evening and happy fish keeping